This week we're going to focus on three different chapters. Chapter 5 on topic and purpose, chapter 2 on ethics, and chapter 13 on delivery. I'm first going to ask you to read chapter 2 on ethics. I seem to always assume that college students understand plagiarism fully, and I'm learning more and more that everyone doesn't. So please look at that section carefully. The main idea is just to keep in mind that no matter whether or not you are quoting word for word something that someone said, or if you are um, simply using someone else's ideas or incorporating that into your speech. In both cases, you really need to cite your source. And sources are great to use. Sources increase your credibility. They give you a lot of content. They're great to use. So use source material and use it often. Just be sure your audience knows who you're referring to in your source. Now, I've provided a sample speech for you this week to look at, a sample student speech. And he does a great job on almost everything. But one thing I'd like him to change is how he dealt with his sources. In his introduction, he refers to two sources and says he used those throughout his presentation for the information he's presenting. I think it's preferable to just mention the sources whenever you use information from that source and do that repeatedly throughout your presentation. It makes it clear to the audience just what information came from which source. So that was chapter two we were just talking about. Let's think about chapter five a minute. That's on topic and purpose. And I really want you to think hard about your topic this week for your presentation. Your presentation is a demonstration or process presentation. Okay? But keep in mind, you have a college-educated audience you're presenting to. And people like to learn things. So think about a topic where we could really learn something. Sometimes when you have a demonstration speech, people sometimes revert to real easy things like making a cake or changing a tire, things that we sort of already know or at least a lot of us probably do. Why don't you try to think of something related to your work or a class you're taking or some kind of interest that you have in an activity that will help us learn something new. I remember one time a, sp a student gave a speech about how to recognize poisonous snakes in our area. In our area. You know what? I, I never forgot that speech. That really stuck with me, and I was glad to learn those things. So think about your topic a lot when you're reading through Chapter 5 this week. Thirdly, you're going to be looking at Chapter 13 on delivery. You know, this is kind of tricky because delivery is something that you really have to work on over time, and sometimes it involves breaking some bad habits. So uh, be kind to yourself when it comes to delivery. Be easy on yourself. Take some time here throughout the next several weeks to work on your delivery, but we'll start right now. Now, in the sample speech I gave you, the student has really has a nice extemporaneous delivery. And by that I mean it's well prepared ahead of time, well organized, but it's spoken to us in a conversational manner, hopefully kind of like what I'm doing right here. So the act of going through your outlining and organizing and thinking through your presentation really sometimes you know, puts you in a position where you can talk in a more conversational tone to us. We just don't want you to read to us off of notes. Now, you may want a few notes, and that's okay. I challenge you to go without notes, but if you need a few notes, go ahead and use a few notes. But I would like you to use note cards if you use notes. Once again, if you think about this, uh, if you look at the sample speech that um, is presented for you, the student is... The student, one thing I'd like the student to change is that the student uses a piece of paper and has it on the table next to him while he's speaking. Um, I would recommend not using a piece of paper because it's flimsy and it could float away. And also if you use note cards, you can put a few notes on each card and then move each card aside as you cover that material. And that way you're not looking down a piece of paper trying to figure out just where you are on that paper at this time. Okay. Um, that's the three chapters we're going to cover this time. There's a, a few um, things that I'd like to still mention to you. There is an abbreviated outline that's due with your speech this time, with your presentation. It's your planning document, as I mentioned before. I have provided a template for you to use. We are going to have a whole other chapter on outlining, and we will go into this in a great more detail in the future. So I just want you to use the template that I have, if you could, and just fill in some of the basic parts of an outline so that we can be sure that we're all organized during our presentation. 
Always remember that all the documents you need are under the section called Documents You Will Need. There's rubrics there for the assignments, there's instructions for the assignments, and I've listed there um, the, the document I told you about that has some suggested topics for um, your demonstration speech on there and um, various other documents. So please look at all those documents there and read through them all. They're all important for this week's work. Okay, it's a big week for you, your first major speech, so I'll let you get to work.